So hello from Green Mopeds in London. So today we're taking out uh, a new bike called the Lexmoto Impulse. Um, it's also got a name, uh, sorry, a SKU, SKU, SKU of a ZS 1200DT. So let's talk about that for a minute. The ZS if you see any bikes that have ZS on them, like the Lexmoto Cypher, the City Slicker, uh, the ZS means um, Zongshen. Zongshen is a motorcycle company out of China. Don't be surprised to hear that. Uh, Zongshen are pretty big, 18,000 employees. Um, they're ISO 9001, so that's a quality standard. They say they produce a million bikes a year, and that's obviously petrol as well. But if you think about that, that's an awful lot of bikes. Um, but as far as we're concerned, because we only do electric, um, the only ones that we're really talking about are the impulse and the Cypher. So the Cypher is the motorbike looking bike you also see it as City Slicker. Okay, so ZS1200 DT is its uh, official name. So Zongshen, they have a sort of petrol motor motorcycle division and then they have this electric division and that's actually called Sineco, C-I-N-E-C-O. And Sineco's model, just to confuse you even further, is called the ES3. So you will find this in many names, <laughs> either the Lexmoto Impulse, the ZS1200 DT, the Sineco ES3. Um, there is also an actual ES3 Pro, which we don't get here, but that's a, a um, two battery version, goes a bit faster. Um, but this one is 1200 watt base they've still managed to get a uh, Bosch motor in it for the 1700 pound price tag so if you look on the motor it will say 1.5 kilowatts so 1200 watt base power 1.1500 watt nominal as in that's what you'll see on your V5 as continuous power and then 2 kilowatts maximum power Okay, so 1.5 kilowatts is 2 horsepower, therefore 2 kilowatts is a little bit under 3 horsepower max. Okay, so you've got that to think about. Um, around this sort of uh, power and uh, performance, you've got the NIU UQI Pro. Although that only does 20 mile range, a tiny little battery, 48 volt. Um, or you've got a UQI GT Pro, which is um, tall. It's meant for taller people, um, but still 1200 watts. Uh, the MQI Plus Sport from new. Um, the others are sort of more powerful, so the EK1 from Horwin is 2.8 kilowatts, the CUX from Super Soco is 2.78 kilowatts max, so probably not comparable. So this bike is sort of around that end of the range, so the MQI Plus Sport, the UQI Pro, things like that. Okay. In fact, um, if we just mention the price for a minute, the only bike that is cheaper than this, that's on the grant, that we know that's lithium ion based, etc. etc., is the NIU UQI Pro 20 mile range, smaller, physically smaller. Um, so, this is 1700 pounds, so a little bit more money, 300 pounds more than a UQI Pro. But in some respects, you are getting more for your money anyway, despite the sort of performance. Um, I'm finding it really difficult to be slow enough. Let's me do this. Okay, so um, it's difference between uh, NIU and uh, 
these this bike is this is 60 volt battery new on their lower end bikes although including the MQI GT the new one um, they are 48 volt so this is a 60 volt 26 amp hour uh, bike okay so um, a little bit more on the old uh, old voltage okay so um, as we said before what that translates to you know volts and amp hours so amp hours sort of gives you range and you need a good bit of volts for acceleration and things like that although having said that this doesn't exactly fly off the mark I have to say especially in eco mode um, but anyway So the 60 volt, 26 amp hour battery, there is actually a 40 amp hour battery, um, but uh, Lexmoto aren't bringing that in, they're just bringing in this one. It might have been better to bring in the other one to be fair, but uh, that's the one they've chosen. So according to the spec, this bike has got 100 mile range, which is 60 miles. They then caveat that on the spec sheet it says at 20 kilometers an hour which is 12 miles an hour so they mean in mode one um, you will not be riding in mode one <laughs> I can tell you that so let's say you're riding in mode two or three so you're doing let's say twice the speed 20 25 miles an hour you know you're flat out doing your commute so you're already halving that to 50 kilometers which would be 30 35 miles which is more likely to be what you're talking about, then you possibly lock off 10%, so you're down to 30 mile range. Um, I would believe that. I wouldn't believe 100 kilometers. Okay, so um, they've put the battery under the seat, sorry, <laughs> under the floor. Um, it's underneath there. You get to it by opening the seat with the key in, in the uh, steering lock and then there's a little pulley that you pull out uh, under the seat which flips up that um, cover the cover comes off and then you're back to a um, looking at the battery in a normal way the battery is not a Panasonic or a um, Eve or anything like that it is made by a company called Greenway so you probably would have seen Greenway talked about they are a big battery supplier they you see them on Alibaba and stuff advertising their batteries as sort of upgrades to standard batteries I don't have any particular reason to worry about that um, batteries rarely go wrong to be honest it's more about how long will they hold their charge for but of course as this bike is on the grant it's got that guarantee of 80% for three years so you know you should be fine with it all right so charge time as pretty much as usual is you know five to six hours from flat um, it will be uh, I guess that would be realistic um, so go around the dashboard um, you might just hear that but it has got a tick on the indicators which many bikes do not and uh, I wish they all would it's not particularly difficult to do that um, so yeah that's good um, it's got the usual mode on and off so over there on the P button down here you can turn the mode as in the throttle on and off or you put the side stand down and it automatically goes into that um, one interesting little thing that it does, which it seems a few more bikes are popping up like this, is that the mode 1, 2 and 3, or Eco Comfort and Sport, are sequential. Um, if you look, you see Sport, Eco, Comfort, Sport, Eco, Comfort, Sport. Okay, so, um, again, not a big deal. Although, it might be nice to just be go from Sport to um, e uh, Comfort rather than having to go through eco but anyway that's the way they've chosen to do it okay um, you can see it's given me 
uh, state of charge on my battery, 83%. There's a scale for ampage being used, which I've mentioned before. I'm not sure I see the value of that, to be fair. Um, and then on the left-hand side, it's got cruise control. And then, you know, normal lights and things. In terms of uh, the design, uh, it's sitting on 12-inch wheels. Um, it's certainly bigger than a UQI Pro. It's sort of a little bit between the MQI Plus Sport and the N series. But we'll come back to that because I'm just about to go up my little test hill. And let's see what it does. So this is Nightingale Lane. So we're going in at 20, we're in sport mode. Will it hold its speed to the top? So this is sort of like a one in seven hill. Something like that, although it gets steeper just around here. And how is it gonna handle it? So you can see the amps are sort of like, it's pulling as much as it can. And it's uh, struggling a little bit for the last part. It's not, you know, unusual that's what happens um, but uh, yeah I mean it made it although uh, you know how much more it would have taken of it before it got down to a s sort of difficult speed to control is, uh, is another matter but you know it made it and uh, I guess that's uh, all that matters you will find on the spec sheets they do actually have a gradient um, uh, uh, capability listed as in how what degrees can it do uh, so they're typically you know there are about one in uh, seven or so you know this is like driving a one liter car you know you're, you're at the bottom end of, of performance of these things but you know you get what you pay for 1700 pounds you're getting a bike that will still you know it will still go 28 and we'll get it onto a road where you can do 28 uh, shortly. Um, but some of the sort of interesting innovation things that this bike has, because we always like to pick out a few, if, if they have any. Uh, one is, if you notice the handlebars. So normally, almost with every other bike that has a battery under the floor, you face this potential issue with the handlebars as in your knees hitting them. And that is because you are forced to sit forward if they have a ridge in the seat. Okay, so we mentioned this on static reviews. Um, you know, ridge seats are nice for the passenger because they raise them up a little bit, but they force you to sit where they are, uh, where, you, where they want you to rather. Um, the only one who sort of combined both that we know of is the Ultra from the Amoco or the EVC from Artisan, which is the same bike. They have a sort of uh, inclined seat, so the rear person still sits a bit higher, but there's no ridge. So when you're on your own, you can sit back further if you want because of your knees on the handlebars. But the other probably obvious alternative is to do what this bike has done and just put an angle onto the handlebars that raises the handlebars. Okay, so even though I'm sitting fairly well forward, because of the ridge in the seat, it doesn't matter. Um, why haven't other people thought of that, I wonder. Okay, so that's one thing. The second bit of innovation is that it comes with a camera built in, included in the price. So the only other bike that we know of that has a camera, uh, that we do rather, is a Super Soco CUX. It has its uh, traffic recorder, as they call it. Um, it's a £175 option on that bike, and it, um, it's got a bit more functionality, I suppose, than this bike. What this bike does is it's a recorder all the time. Okay, so sitting under the seat is a little sort of black box. It's got a 16 gig SD card included, and as soon as you turn the bike on, it's going to start recording. Okay, um, so when we get back, I could load up that video as well and, and show you what uh, what it does. Uh, obviously the capacity 16 gig uh, will probably run out but I uh, can't see why you wouldn't be able to put in a bigger one. Um, so it's good for you, you know recording P3 
people going through red lights, for example, <laughs> or uh, accidents and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's included. You can't turn it on or off, which is what you can on the CUX, um, but it's still there doing its thing. Okay, so, um, and as I said, included in the price, so that's obviously good. Um, having said that, they've counteracted it with another bit of innovation, but is actually quite painful. <laughs> and that is um, the startup noise. Okay, lots of bikes have startup noise, especially Chinese bikes. But this one is pretty horrible. Uh, it's in, all I can say is Chinglish, English with a Chinese accent. We will show you, I will show you it. Um, Lots of people have said, you know, can they disable startup noises on bikes? I really don't know why they do it. Uh, but you'll hear it when we stop to show you another piece of innovation that they've done or functionality that they've got, which is de-restriction. So uh, the de will take this bike to about 36, which is obviously a good thing if you feel like you need more power or you're starting on a driver's license and then you do your CBT and you want to uh, de-restrict it and go a little bit faster. Okay, but what we've said about de-restricting in the past still holds true. I mean, the instructions on how to de-restrict it are actually supplied by Lexmoto. So this, there isn't a warranty concern. Um, obviously, when you go faster, you're, you're going to decrease the range. But you need to remember when you do the de-restriction, you are going to be uh, changing this bike into effectively a 125cc. Okay, so you need a license that supports that. Merely by the fact that it goes over 28. Okay, so see now we are in sport mode and we're doing 28, or 30 in fact, um, which is probably 28 if you accurately measured it. Uh, so no issues. As I said, it's not going to set any records this bike, not with less than two horsepower. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to de-restrict it and what happens afterwards. Um, and then I'm also going to show you uh, another little feature they have, which is an integrated speaker. So you can play music or phone calls through the bike's own speaker. Um, whether you want to do that is another matter. Okay, so here we are. So you might still just hear the indicator noise, as I said before. Okay, so um, so to de-restrict it, you basically throttle and squeeze the brake. And now you're going to hear a lovely little bit of Chinglish. The Bluetooth device is ready to tell. So that was the Bluetooth device is ready to pair. So this has got Bluetooth and that's for playing music through the speaker, which we're going to do in a minute. Um, you see this ERRP314, that means that it's noticed that this and this is twisted. But you only have to hold it for five seconds and now this bike is de-restricted. Okay, and we'll show you that when we take off. Okay, but now I'm going to show you the Bluetooth speaker feature. Um, and I'll just take my gloves off for that and come back in a minute. Okay, so uh, here we are. The phone has got Bluetooth. I've previously paired my Lexmoto Impulse. It's called something else, but you can obviously rename it. Uh, there are two features within the Bluetooth. One is for calls and one is for a speaker, media. Um, I don't know whether you would want to actually play calls through the speaker especially as they probably won't hear what you're saying, that you'll only hear, or everyone will hear what's being said, but they won't hear what you're saying, so I'm not sure you'd ever do that. But anyway, um, so yeah, Lexmoto Impulse, turn the bike on, listen to the... The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Yep. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. Okay, the Bluetooth device is connected successfully. Okay, so basically what that now means is that if I put on some music, um, that is going to come out of the speaker. Hopefully you can hear that. Okay, so that is 
coming out the speaker. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so now we are de-restricted. Um, hopefully you'll see the impact of that as we carry on. So I'll just come back when I'm uh, ready to go. Okay, so we're now uh, de-restricted. We're now in sport mode. Don't expect any records, but at least um, we should get over 30. Uh, which, um, as I said, some people just want to do that, even if they've only got 50cc license, to be honest. But um, if you do do it, you need to tell your insurer and also tell, uh, also um, remember that you need a license that suits. Okay, so let's go. Okay. So that's 30. We can work out what the time is on that later. Um, and here we go, it's, it's still going. Uh, 35, 36, 37, 38. Okay, 39, 40. We're on a bit of a downward slope now, so that's probably uh, part of the reason for that. So now we're gonna go over Richmond Bridge and uh, it'll probably go back down again a little bit. But it certainly shows you that de-restriction does work and uh, it probably makes this bike a bit more usable uh, anyway, even at lower speeds, because there's more power available. But you have to remember when they're de-restricted, that is flat out, it's not gonna go any faster, whatever conditions change, hills, your battery's not fully charged, what have you, you will see the result of that by decreasing speed, and of course decreasing range. Okay, but uh, if you ever are on a 40 mile road, you'd probably be much rather be doing it on this mode than on the 28 mile an hour road, a mode, okay. All right, so not many other things to cover. Colors, uh, there is this color, which is white, um, and then gray. There is, there are other colors, uh, but we're not getting them over here. There's three other colors, but uh, they've just decided on these two, okay. That's that. Uh, it is suitable for two people, as I've said. There are pegs for the second person. The seat's made for two people. Storage under the seat. So even though the battery's under the floor, unfortunately the storage under the seat isn't big enough for a helmet of any size that we can tell. We tried our uh, medium uh, full f uh, open face and that doesn't go in. So I doubt a small one would go in either. Okay. Um, I have to say, de-restricting this bike certainly makes it a bit more enjoyable. I'm going to put it into uh, eco mode in a minute and see if it makes that one any more bearable. Okay, um, that's probably about it. £1,700 after the grant, you have to add on OTR to that price. Um, it is the second most cost effective bike we do. Uh, if you were to spend, if you had less than £1,700 to spend, I would probably pick this one over a UQI Pro, merely because I'm probably too big for a UQI Pro, <laughs> and uh, the range is like to be more even if you de-restrict it. Um, it's more usable, there's a bit of space under the seat, handlebar space, um, all that sort of stuff. It's got some cubby holes, it's got a USB port, what it doesn't have that uh, NIU or all NIUs have is an alarm so you might want to buy a lock with an alarm and it also doesn't have any of the app side that NIU have on all their bikes so tracking which obviously can help with uh, theft pre prevention um, you can add that sort of stuff we've got customers who've added the little GPS into his uh, hall in and he gets an app to go with it um, but as people say would you buy a bike if it had an app or not? Does it make the difference? Mm, I would say probably not. Okay, but if you like the sort of tracking capability, NIU certainly have all that stuff.
Okay, so um, that's that. Let's see what happens on eco mode, as we are supposed to be in a 20 after all. Oh, look at that. Eco mode, 24, which is almost perfect for a 20 mile zone. So I think the, I think the takeaway from this little test is de-restrict it. <laughs> Have a license that suits de-restricting. Tell your insurer that it's actually 125 because it makes it a lot more usable, I would say. All right, so hopefully that's been useful. Um, I will put up some of the video from that the bike took as well, so you can see how that is. And uh, we will be doing a sort of walk around review like we normally do. And uh, obviously, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have lots of other reviews on there. I think we're over 120 now. Uh, static and ride reviews and um, obviously you're welcome for a test ride if you want to come and try the bike and uh, if you have any questions please feel free to contact us at hello at green-mopeds.com and thanks very much. Mm -hmm.